All right. Well, let me hit play on on some music. This is Isaac Stern plays Mozart. I know I've been the optimist about the mazes, but like I thought we had done the last one. Well, here's the thing. So we did a third maze already, and it was really hard, and it took us an hour, and then it turned out. It wasn't recording. And I don't know what to say about this, yeah. but we lost the whole thing. It was it was amazing, not to use that pun, but the music started skipping and repeating at a certain point. It was a nightmare of an experience. And unfortunately, we fun. can't share that with you. It was fun, you. and it was perfect. And there's been this maze we've been avoiding, and yeah. now we have to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> My thought was maybe we do the same maze a second time. But, but that's just, I can't Who wants know. to do that? Oh. And now I'm really not in the mood to do a maze. I really don't want to do one, and this one looks like... It get, this is ten times it harder makes than me anyone sick we've ever to done. look at. Welcome to Keeping Your Mind Sharp with Jeff and Ryan. This maze is a fucking cube. Yeah, this is the cube surface. Four mazes in one. From page 19 of the Ultimate Maze book. It's maybe more frustrating to look at than the movie Cube by Vincenzo <laughs> Natale. I can tell you right now, looking at this, I'm not going to do this right. I know I'm g- I can't make so heads or tails cube, of this. And on each side, there, so there's, there's a zone that's labeled 1, 2, 3, up through 6 in different parts. And like, so what we're six supposed... Six sides of a cube, six... Yeah, there's not even a start or an end. The instructions are, and I figure we're going to go with number 1, which is find a path from 1 on the top to 6 on the bottom without traveling through any other number. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. But the thing is, like, there's stuff overlaid where the back part of the cube know, is going yeah. through the front part of the cube. Yeah. And I can't tell you there's that I would stay on the planes, same part of which the thing. It, I mean, what it really does is make it impossible to look ahead because you can only really pay attention. It takes a lot of concentration to just pay attention to where you're going. Like, maybe this is what's going to force me into being zen about the maze, you know? Yeah. Like, because there's no other way to. This is gonna make me want to throw up. Like, I don't. It does. It makes me sick. I just want to start. Let's begin. Let's begin. All right. So we're going to six, though. Yeah, we're trying to get to six. You can't go through any other number. It's impossible to know that I'm on the same part of the cube. I've just walked off the edge onto my first uh, side path. First dead end. Side of the cube. Let's go this way. Oh my god. This is gonna look like a nightmare if I have to follow more than one path. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, no, oh, you no. can't go through yeah, two? you can't go through other numbers. Shit. So that's not the right way. I'm gonna try going down the back side of this cube. Like, that's gonna be even remotely possible. Damn it, that goes through five. Oh my god. This is dizzying. This is oh, <laughs> not okay. Oh no, and that's a dead end. This is too much brain. Okay, so... Oof, okay, okay. Oh god. And back at one. Let's go this way. What the fuck? That's a dead end. I think I found your first dead end. How do you... Wait a minute. Oh. oh no, the way this is, I don't think this is doable. Like, I, I'm i now overlapping and I, I now think I'm on a different part of the fucking cube. Wait, where am I? Because I'm looking at three things at once right now. I'm literally looking at multiple, not just two, the front and the back of it, but like... I made it. Also, you made it to six? Yep. I did it. Are you calling it a maze? Are you just done with this? Because there's more parts no, to I it. I promise you, I made it to six. No, 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 I know, but okay, what I'm okay, saying okay. is, even if you made it to six, now you gotta go from two to five and uh, three to four. Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> no. if, that, if that's what you want me to do, <laughs> I, I thought we were just. Do you wanna do that? No! Because no. if, if you're challenging me. No, no, no. Um, I'm not challenging you. We may be modern men, but we're still men. Don't <laughs> solicit a challenge. I don't. Till all of your records do this. <laughs> <laughs> At least a few of them. I forgot that this one does. I made it. It's not that hard. It just sucks to look at it. All right, let me Let's see if I can find this. I gotta, I gotta move. I'm gonna. Yeah, you gotta change that. 
my god, I just did one of those things where like the perspective shifted and I and it, it was like yeah, the cube was inverted. It's real. It it'll actually make you sick to look at. And the the route you have to go is is just maybe the the thing that's hard about the route you have to go is that it's sickening. <laughs> <laughs> it might be what the hell, dude? Yeah, you got it. Do I? Yes, I made it to there six. There go. See, that's not so bad. The idea of now tracing from two to five. Well, do you feel like we've learned enough from this maze experience to call it a yes, day on this definitely. maze? <laughs> now, is that you just wanting to do that because you don't want to do more maze? Or have we actually reached something? Well... <laughs> What's the difference? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good question. I know that I can do it, whereas before we used to look at it and say, there's no way to even look at this. I mean, it's not easy to look at. No. The other one was intellectually harder, and it sucks that we didn't get that on record. I know. Because that one was like, we felt like we had accomplished something when we beat it. This one, I was like, well, I didn't throw up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the lesson from this one is, even if it looks at first like something is impossible... Just give it a few minutes and you'll might maybe be able to figure it out. Like, don't freak out when you see yeah, something just, impossible. Just try. Just try. Something that looks hard may not be. Yeah, that's the full... That's This one is more of a psychological test. Yeah, Than, like, a test of... Well, um, this is the last maze I want to do for about 50 years. Yeah, I think I'm... I, You know what? I think I might be done... Doing with mazes. mazes? Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to now make it a regular thing where you sit down with your pipe in your smoking room with your big book of mazes. I think I'm going to try to quit smoking and stop doing mazes. <laughs> the, the two vices of America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that concludes keeping your mind sharp. I'm going to get you some new records. <laughs> <laughs> The broken record of doing a maze is about to be turned off. I hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to yeah. I feel not like more if next nothing season. else. We've really tested the limits of like how much of a visual thing can somebody listen to. Yeah. <laughs> how much can how they do take? we take it further? Yeah. Than a maze. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 2, Episode 11. We're closing in on the end of a very, very long night. <laughs> a very long morning. night, very long journey. Yeah. We're closing in on it. We're not there yet, that's for damn sure, <laughs> but we're, we're getting there. Last episode, we got all the optional summons. Mm -hmm. We got Asura, Leviathan, Bahamut, you name it, we've got it. We haven't saved in a while. That's true. That's a thing. It's been since at least before we beat all of those behemoths and Bahamut. Big cave. And um, we head back to Earth. Yeah, because there's like the moon connection. Yeah. Is maybe not to go to the moon, but to bring something back from the moon. Yeah. They change it whenever they feel like they should. But anyway, where this episode begins is we, we leave the moon and we head back to Earth where we find some shit. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So you're going back to Earth? Yeah. I think. Yeah, what was the last big story thing we did? Because we've been, I feel we, like we've been We got this for guy. We got this guy. We got the dude. And he yeah. told us something. What did he say? <laughs> oh, yeah. We were now like, we, we have... can't get into the castle. He was like, oh, I'll break down the force field. Don't worry. This game is lousy with airships. Scream! The giant of Babel will appear. So we land on Earth, and a ton of crazy shit is going on. At the Tower of Babel, like, this giant robot strolls right out. Mm -hmm. What we weren't ready for is that going back to Earth would cause, like, a big cutscene followed by, like, an immediate dump into a dungeon with, like, no opportunities to save or right. go buy items <laughs> exactly. or anything. Exactly. So that's where we're at. We're looking at a giant robot walking out of the tower. But I need to buy items. <laughs> <laughs> I need to save. Oh, dude, you didn't even save? Come on, please let me save. God damn it. Dude, 
I can't believe that wasn't the first thing you did when you got out of there on the moon. You always, why are you getting on the airship and being like, I'll remember to save? Like, why is that a thing that you're doing? I don't know, man. Like, that's what I didn't understand before. It's terrible. Blast it. Here come some tanks. The gnomes have come to the surface. Here we are. We dwarves. Are the dwarves. Shall fight for the Mother Earth. Lally ho. Lally ho. Yeah, everybody starts showing up, coming together to fight the giant robot. Yeah, everyone we've met or helped out throughout the game like converges on this on this mm-hmm. moment. People who were dead are not dead. Oh, everybody's coming together. Yang! Yang? Yeah, like, <laughs> Yang is back. <laughs> I cannot be resting while you're fighting. Count me in. Wasn't Yang dead? We thought he was, but we didn't see his body. Sid is out of bed and back doing his old games. Mm-hmm. Sid is here. All we need is the kids. Stone kids. Oh, here they're, they are! They're here. Palum and Porum show up. The elder is like, it's okay, I went and I saved them. Hey, <laughs> long time no see, man. Our elder removed our petrification. It was just... <laughs> just... That's why they did it so haphazardly. They were they like, knew, they it's were gonna like, be fine. Knew, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will come get us eventually. Like I said, somebody taught them how to do that. Yeah. It, and he was, and yeah. you know that they must have done it, and he's like, yeah. he comes home and he's like, oh, they did it they again. They did it like, again. I gotta go like, <laughs> well, no, you know what? They probably, he probably he was like, they haven't come home. They probably did it again somewhere in the world. Now I gotta go find them. There's stone somewhere in the world. Yeah. I have to go get them. <laughs> This war is not yours alone. It involves all the creatures on the Earth. And the moon. Here he is. Edward's out of rehab. (laughs) This is that classic removal of the stakes that you're going to want in a climax of a thing. Yeah, I was going to say, this makes it sort of happier, but I think it does nothing but, like, hurt the story. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the kind of thing of, like, oh, well, they can't all be dead. And also, you're going to want a a finale that includes all of your friends. That's true. You do want everyone showing up. You know who doesn't show up? Rydia's mom. (laughs) Rydia's mom is dead and Tella is still dead. dead. (laughs) So, it's a halvesies. Halvesies. (laughs) Cecil, let me show you the courage you've taught me. It's the meeting of the airships. I can't fully enjoy this knowing that we haven't saved yet. Who's this? Kusoya from the moon. <laughs> of course. One last time. One last play the hits. Yeah, one more time. We're going to introduce everybody. Who Encore the favorite <laughs> scene. So now that everyone has reintroduced themselves, introduced themselves anew, all the introductions are done, we, we go inside <laughs> of the giant robot. There's got to be a save point somewhere in here. There's got to be. Out of here. <laughs> oh, Fuck me, God. Seriously. We've been talking about our hubris when it comes to running from fights and stuff like that, but we do something here that is truly, like, slicing our ankles. Like, what we do is run from every single battle until we get to a save. Well, because we're scared. Like, if we die here, we go back to before Bahamut. Right. But in the process (laughs) of that, we're not remembering that this is like a final, like, leveling you up time, and we're skipping all of it. Yeah, I mean we've been sk- we've been skipping. We've all been of skipping it. a lot. We've been getting by the boss fights just like by the skin of our teeth. And now for a it's while. like there's a whole dungeon that we would be fighting our way through, but because for about we hadn't half saved, of it, we don't fight any of it at all. Just running to the save point. Yeah, they didn't even heal me up. I know. No, I'm, an just, you to, you I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You need to tent. Uh... <sighs> Dude, the stakes are so high right now. We're flying without a net. We're flying... Like, the stakes are so high, it's like, we won't be able to finish the game tonight versus I think we will. Net. I know, I know, man. So we enter a part of the dungeon that's called Chest. Yeah, what this dungeon is, is like you're inside of the giant robot fighting your way to its control center or something Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chest. Oh, you're in the the machine. Mm-hmm. It's 937 gold pieces. Like I care. Like I give a fuck. There has to be a save point. Like there has to be one. <laughs> no. Please. <laughs> 
I'm surprised and attacked from behind and I know, like you're just it's it's coming why at you small so, angles. Why so damage? Ooh, that was so much damage. Dude. This is my fault. This is my fault. This is my fault. Yeah, but the funniest was earlier when you when I was like, why don't you save? And you're like, I'll remember to save. I was like, why why would you do it like that? But like I was I like, wanted whatever. to save next to the door. No, I know, I know, but like I'm this realizing time now, I just like, didn't this remember was, this time no, I just, this time you just didn't remember. Okay. I I honestly thought we'd go back to the planet and have to go somewhere. I didn't right. think it would just like No, I know, I know, but, but that's like, like Just like we have forgotten the lesson of walking around in the woods we mm-hmm. learned in the first game. I know that the lesson in this one is that, like, you always got to be, like, wary that a big cutscene might happen immediately. Like, you, yeah. you should save every opportunity because you don't know. There's what's never around a the reason corner. to be like, I'll save when I get over there. There's yeah. never no, a reason to do not. it. <laughs> and I know that we're going to forget this lesson, too. The next time we're 20 hours in on a play session in the next Final Fantasy, we're going to walk into some 20 minute cutscene. I know. It's only going to become more likely that we're going to run into gigantic this is sudden cutscenes. This scenes. is a problem that's going to get worse. Well, because I. <laughs> yeah. It state, th- this happened to me all the time in games like this or where like at this stage of the game I just wind up I mean <sighs> total walking into totally the finale when I do not putting up signposts of like are you sure you want to go here you can't go back <laughs> yeah I know man every fight we're either surprised or attacked from behind like there's no getting know, away like, clean you shouldn't be surprised look at where you are Giving us a cabin, there's gotta be a place to use it. Yeah, like, Bahamut... You totally could have just left the moon, and what would have happened (laughs) is you this. (laughs) Jesus. They want us to fight really bad. Well, theoretically, this is like the final... In a way, like, this is a really cool, like, we're making our way through a giant robot's body, we're in a stomach. Yeah, we're in the final dungeon, right? The last one, the, the finale. The, just like last season. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the final dungeon. Yeah. Theoretically, it's cool, but... There should be a lot of dungeon, cro- like, we should just be like, yeah, we're going through this dungeon. Passage. But instead, the stakes have never been higher. Monster box. Oh, they save so up ahead, we see the save area that's like feet away from us. But before that is a box and you go to open it and there's monsters yeah, in the box and, and you it, can't run from these fights. At this point in the game, about half of the treasure chests are monster are boxes. Monster boxes. Like the, the tides are turning to be to where they're all monster boxes eventually. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, boy. <laughs> like, ah! I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. The stakes of the fight could not have been higher, but we managed to get mm-hmm. through it, and we yes. actually beat the guy. And we move on, running towards that save room, and it's just, it's so dense around here. Yeah. It's up there. It's up there. It's, it's right up, up there. there. It's right up there. It's right up there, dude. Oh my god, just get to it. Just fucking get to it. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Cabin. Oh. Stay at some place nice. Yes. I feel extraordinary Ugh. relief. You made it. You, you want to do this last part? You can keep going. Uh, I mean, you've earned it. Yeah, but you can I play just without a net. Did, yeah. We both think this game is about to end, don't we? Yep. I'm like, you want to finish the game, or should I? Like, one of us should do it because we're at the final boss. This is a repeating thing. This happened this last, happened season. last season. Is yeah. this going to happen again? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> you're in the lung making your way to the heart yeah you're gonna go through the pulmonary valve you're gonna be a pulmonary embolism inside the this giant robot yeah, block the blood flow from his lung to his heart why would the giant robot need a lung I think it's like or figurative stomach. you know it's like this is we were in the chest and then we went to the stomach and now we're in the lung just saying, we're back in the chest. I think we're like moving to the heart is supposed to be the... We're gonna attack its heart. Yeah, okay. They haven't mentioned what is this, this machine. machine? It's, a, it's a bad giant. It's a bad giant, but like, who's? The bad guys. Who's, which bad guys? The moon man. Who, Not Golbez. Well, Golbez is working for the moon man. Right. You're late. 
Oh, it's this guy again? Oh, it's all of them. So as we're making our way to the heart of the robot, we run into the four fiends again. Yeah, there's like a little boss rush here where you fight them all back to back. All four of the fiends. The giant won't stop. You, you will be laid to rest. Are we gonna fight all of them at once? Four fiends. Glad to meet you and fight you again. <laughs> that was the nice He's great, fiend. yeah. He You've taught best. me to join forces. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ah, I guess four weak things can team up and beat me. So Rubicant is like, learned the lesson of he should team up. But right. the mistake he's made is that he brought all of them, but they didn't really team up. They're not all fighting us at once. They we fight still us all fight them individually. One at a time. <laughs> if Rubicant and Millen and the get it. fiend of the air, that's air. Not, that's not teamwork. That's right. just like taking Showing turns. Showing up. <laughs> but that's not teamwork. You done did it. Yeah, berserking and hasting Cecil is a good idea if you can manage the rest of the fight. And the fiends, as they're dying, like call out to their master, the moon master, Master Zemus. Mm -hmm. And they're like, help. <laughs> Fuck, we <laughs> fucked up. Sorry. Master Zemus. Once again, no. We lost. We shouldn't team up with losers. Yeah, no kidding. I don't want to fight everything. I don't want to fight anything, really, except for the bosses. I mean, you say that, and yet you know how these games work. But, I mean, this has been, for like half the game, we've had this attitude of, like, we don't need to worry about leveling up. And then, and it's and, worked out so far. I mean, we make it through all this stuff. Right, we do beat all those bosses, but the idea of, like, only bosses from here on out. Yeah. It's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. You're in the CPU, a.k.a. the heart. The core of this giant, the CPU. We must destroy the defensive system first, otherwise all the damage will be repaired. So the final boss of the whole dungeon is like a floating bunch of balls. Yeah, it's floating balls. <laughs> They're a CPU, I Computer guess. Computer balls. Computer balls. <laughs> okay, so we gotta destroy, like, these balls. We've gotta kick them in the balls. Yeah, so you have to kick, like, one of the balls in the balls first, mm -hmm. which is just, one of them's gonna defend, you gotta kill him, and then you can take out the attackers and stuff, and we do. And we destroy this fucking robot. Yeah. I mean, you've killed the four fiends, you've killed the robot's core, all that's left is the main bad guy. No, we've got our main bad guy. Our main bad guy, and then, guy and then Zemus right. on the moon. Yeah, okay. This guy. Golbez. Yeah, Golbez. You ruined my plan. Golbez comes up from the behind the curtain like he's like the Wizard of Oz, and he's like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck. Every time he sees us, we've just like thwarted his plan. Right. But then he's still, every time we thwart his plan, he's like, fine anyway. Yeah. Don't you realize who you are? Stop it. Wake up. Wake up, Golbez. So Fusoya does like some some magic to Golbez. Yeah, he like clears out the Golbez's like blocked energy or yeah, something. Yeah, he, he clears the cache in memory and starts fresh. It's it's mm -hmm. a factory reset on Golbez. Mm -hmm. He wakes up <laughs> realizing he doesn't hate things. Why did I have all that hatred? Come to your senses. Do you remember your father's name? Oh, he's our brother, probably? My father? His na yeah, Kluya. Kluya. What? Kluya was our father. That means... Cecil's you brother? You and I... Golbez is my... Not Wait, hold on. Not Kane? Kane isn't my brother? The famous no, brother? Kane, Kane is just who like also our buddy. Dude, yeah, I mean, like, I'm... Whatever. You were controlled by Zemus's telepathy. Your blood made it easier for him to use you. Because you what? have moon blood. Because we all have moon blood? Well, he and I do, because our dad is from the moon. But why wasn't he using us at all? I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. We were working for the bad guy for, at the beginning, and we were like, let's do it. Yeah, but that was we just like, like that was not. like like the Nazis that went along with the program. Yeah, right? but maybe that's what it's like when they're you're being used, you know? But this guy seems to have been, like, literally mind-controlled. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, but like, I'm whereas, just like, saying, they just, like, convinced why, I don't Cecil. know why he wasn't using us. They convinced Cecil. I'm just Cecil. saying the game starts and we're, like, raking and <coughs> villages. You're not wrong about that, but that was, like, he was, like, I don't... Whereas this guy was, like, mentally controlled and to not be able to even question it, right? 
That's what he would have you believe. All right. Well, we've made that joke like a ton of times with these characters just being like, yeah, no, I was totally under the spell. I mean, maybe he just needed one. He's like, I'll choose this guy. You were controlled by Zemus' telepathy. There's a lot of people assuming like, look, you're a good guy. Yeah. You didn't do any of this. <laughs> this was all, all some Zemus. other person. It's all Zemus. Zemus was controlling you. So as as we've been touching on throughout the season, this uh-huh. game brings up the idea of where does responsibility lie? Like in a fashion in, society. In society yeah, yeah, for like yeah. atrocities and whatnot mm-hmm. and falls firmly on the side of at the very top. <laughs> Like, even the guy who was second down, like, not him either. Only yeah. the very top. Like, Hitler and Hitler alone. Everyone else <laughs> is clean. The bad guy's got to be two masks deep at least, you know? Like, it can't the, just be... The thing is, though, with this brother thing, like, they didn't plant that we had a father or a long-lost, like, backstory no. or anything like that. To then, like, no. when they're now going, like, this guy, I, even this, guy this guy was your dad. Also, this other dude, this is your brother. And you're, like, supposed to go, whoa, family means something. But, like, the fact that they made no mention of your backstory up until now. Well, they, I mean, I mean, this guy doesn't, I don't even know what this means to Cecil. He's like, huh, so I have a brother and a dad from the moon. And my brother's the guy who I've been fighting against. We don't even know if he's like, wait, but I had parents. And they're like, but you were a dad. We don't know what any of that was. <laughs> Is that part of the story? <laughs> yeah, you're like, right. One thing that was never really clear to me is why Cecil got away clean and was never mind controlled, whereas like Golbez, who's genetically the same, is taken over by that. Yeah. And the game does bring this up. Yeah, I kind of like it. But beyond bringing it up, they don't say much about it. Well, they bring up that Golbez is like, whoa, he chose me, which means that I must be inherently bad. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, it fucks with him. Yeah. Yeah. It means my soul was stained with evil for Zemus to use. What the fuck? Oh, because he's bringing it up. Cecil's being like, but he could have controlled me. And he's going, but okay. he did, and he controlled me. Which because means that, which I'm, means that I'm, I'm a bad guy. Yeah, because he chose me because I was evil already. Where are you going? I'll, I'll settle, settle all this myself. myself. I don't trust you. You just said you're a bad guy. Zemus is a lunar. He belongs to my race. I'll come with you. So, Fusoya and Golbez are gonna go to the moon to fuck up Zemus? Yeah. Together? They've decided that, like, the rest of us here who have gotten to them to this point, like, don't need to be involved in this, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're like, we're, we're gonna get out of here and take care of it. This scene is like, Golbez was like, you rats, like, I'm gonna kill you, and then Fusoya walked up to him and put his hand on him, and Golbez went like, whoa! You and me, old man. Like, we're going to go get Zemus. And then they just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Every, all of us watching this, and that's it. There's. N- <laughs> that's and, it. And we're like, walk. I guess we should follow them on our airship to yeah, the well, moon. They didn't ask us to, but we're going to. We'll just go. How did they get to the moon? Because the they don't take the way. The Babel has a way to the moon, right? Isn't that the yeah, point? Yeah, but they of also. It? They never, we never see that. We, we never don't see, see that it happen. And we can't use it. And we're not in the tower even right now. We're in the robot. We're not far from the tower. We're not far from the tower. But they must have a different way. Golbez must, right? Or Fusoya. And, well, Fusoya came with us down to the. Yeah, but he's service. a lunarian. Maybe he knows how to get back. I don't. Yeah. Here's I don't know. another question. They call them lunarians. Because they come from the moon, but they don't come from the moon. They don't. They come, come from, from the a moon planet that we call Luna. That's yeah. Between they come from Mars a, and they come from just another place. Yeah, and they made a different moon. They're not lunar they're not at all. From they're not. Their origin is not the moon. No. I'll just stay What's here. What's the deal with? Is he on the ground right now? I was think he, he like absorbed all of the hatred out of him. Oh, because he was like, "Whoa, why would I have all that hatred?" And he's now like, "Whoa!" So whoa. he magically <laughs> took all the. He's like, oh, look. he's like on the ground right now, like puking all the hate out yeah. of him onto the ground. Goodbye, Goodbye Cecil. Cecil. Cecil's like, man, Rosa, life is confusing. <laughs> Are you just gonna let him go like this? He may lose his life. His life, Ryan! Oh no. Oh Not no! Golbez. Not Golbez! <laughs> the most evil man who ever lived. Not Joseph Goebbels! <laughs> Isn't he your big brother? I don't know! 
big right. brother. I didn't grow up with him. It's not like I look up to him. It just must have meant like older bro- elder. Like, well, I'm sure it literally is older well, brother, but, but there's part like of me that's like, like, it's like come on. Oh, big right. Bro- big like, brother like, versus older brother. You would never be like, I found out I had an older <laughs> brother. That's a normal thing to say. It's right, a descriptive like, term. Big brother. But a big brother is like. That's why they have that program. Yeah, exactly. Big brother. It's a like. It's a not mental, called yeah. older brother. Older. <laughs> <laughs> I joined the older brother, older brother program. program. <laughs> you can meet an older man who will keep in touch, yeah, but tell you'll you always feel slightly brother. estranged from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the older brother program. <laughs> you didn't grow up in the same house because he was already in college by the time you were He's in middle school. Older than He's you. He's older you, than you are. You don't relate really. <laughs> but you are related by blood. But in the program you're not. <laughs> it's not it's complicated. It's like a pen pal you have out of obligation. <laughs> it's collapsing. We must get out. But where's the way out? This, this way. way. Through the poop chute. We gotta go through Kane, the intestines. motherfucker. Right out of this fucking asshole. Kane! Talk, Talk later. later. We, must hurry. we must hurry. So Kane shows up again. Yeah. And again, it's like, whoa, I'm better now. Don't worry. I'm a good guy now. <laughs> Which just happened with Golbez, too. So I guess it's like a transference of, like, you know, when you kill the mother spider, all the other spiders disappear. Or, like, when you kill... Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I'm using <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like when kill you kill... The mother spider? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. What I really mean is, you know, when it's like everybody's mind controlled and you kill like the parent Borg and then all the Borgs become normal again. Yeah, but the mother spider. Yeah, you want to unpack that? (laughs) What I'm I'm thinking in video game terms, you know, where it's like you got to because then it's like one of those situations in a boss fight in like a Zelda boss fight where it's like shitting out other little spiders and all you have to do is focus on the main one and all the other ones will just disappear when you beat the mom. I get it. I get what you mean. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I believe you this time, Kane. Yeah, but you've and said ready this to like a bunch of Well, I hope you're ready to die. Yeah, the consequences <laughs> are by my sword. Gobez was also under the control. It's not Kane's fault. Rosa, I know you've been sleeping around. <laughs> I know how everyone looks at you, Rosa, and how you talk to all of them. The people and I was yours. willing to look past it, but you can't defend this piece of look, shit. Look, everybody who looks like you, who has the exact same sprite as you, they're all these weird dancers who all nine of them came around me, gave me a Wait private a minute, show. What about the dancers. What about the dancers? There was the also dancers, that town where the before people we walk away from this game, we're, and the, so the little people. Animals, we're not pig done people, yet. We're not done yet. <laughs> we're right. We're not done yet. But the thing is, we're not right about any of that. Like, none of that comes back up before the end of the game. The dancers never come back up, and we never get an explanation for why everybody in that town is tiny pigs. <laughs> let's not let's not convince ourselves like last time. With I, the four I don't orbs. think we're. I think we're we're like close ish but like well because we still have to certainly like even if we've taken care of Goebbels, we still got to take care of Hitler. Yeah, and I mean, like, this game wouldn't be a Final Fantasy game if it didn't end with a boss fight where you're fighting some, like, abstraction of human badness. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's, it, it's gotta go a further layer removed. It can't just it be can't a dude. Just, yeah, it, it can't, can't be your brother. And it can't just be the four fiends, because they were just patsies. Right. The and it game can't, one it can't was just a, a patsy. robot brain. No. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be an abstraction of evil. Gobez from the moon. So Gobez went to the moon with Fusoya to defeat Zemus, Gobez, Cecil's brother. We just saw this, now we got to bring Kane up to speed. I hope he doesn't get hypnotized again. Yeah, uh-huh. fuck, I'm on your side, Edge. Like, what's to say it's not going to happen? What's to say Edge. it's even over now? If that happens again, go ahead and get rid of me. Kane's like, if he takes me over again, just fucking kill me. You know? I might as well do that now. It already happened. Again. I can't believe that we are still 
the most gullible person. Like, Kane doesn't even <laughs> have to prove anything. Yeah, we just accept him back. And it's like, I'll join you again. And you're all like, okay. We we did lose somebody there because Fusoya went off with Golbez. I mean, so the, we, yeah, we the got an empty party slot. It's so disappointing to me that Kane is the one who comes with you to the ending when throughout the game he's just like a shit bag who's yeah. not reliable. They and there's like, characters like Yang and stuff that are like, we find out they're alive, but they don't get to come to the end. Yeah, why isn't the, our party made up of all the people who we've lost? Yeah, you go to the end with Kane, the least reliable person who's ever lived. Yeah. And Edge, a ninja you just met. Well, like, in the very, <laughs> very beginning of the game, they were like, if Cecil and Kane got together, they'd be unstoppable. And then, like, the game doesn't play out that concept in any kind of a way other than Kane's a bad guy. And then... We team up at the end, I guess. We're unstoppable. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know that we're unstoppable. We're actually... <laughs> we're very stoppable. Can Kane join the fucking team again? I will go to the moon. I will go to the moon. Well, because Fusil- Fusilli's already out, right? Right. Rosa, Rosa and Rydia will get off here. It's too risky. There's I no guarantee of safe anyway. return. It's, like- it's gotta be, because... This game can't be saying again, you, the women, it's too risky. Stay behind. Come on, get off the big whale. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I'm saying that all the time. It's, I say that to all the ladies. Dude, don't throw Rosa off. She's, don't do it. Why? Why are you burning all these bridges? Now, Rydia. No, what? You be a good girl and stay home. All right, this is obviously leading towards a lesson for this shit, right? Yeah. Not only are we walking to the finale with a team of, like, mostly strangers and unreliable people. (laughs) Yep, yep. But we, like, kick out the two people who deserve to be there. Yeah. Especially Rydia. Like, if anyone deserves to walk into the finale, it's Rydia. For sure. And and Cecil's like, nah, it's too dangerous. One of them cracks open the earth and bends magical forces to her will. The other one raises people from the dead. I know. And literally, we're like, yeah, it's probably too dangerous yeah. for the ladies. Is, you guys Instead, stay Instead, I'm going to go with, like, rapey ninja guy <laughs> and, like, the guy who just ha- helped engineer our downfall. It's quite a plan. I... I hate this scene. <laughs> I think it's sweet of you to say that, hot shot. Thank fucking God, dude. Because w- when that happened earlier in this game, I was like, what is this game doing? She's, like, older than us now. No, not only that, like, she's just better than everybody. And, like, that's the thing is, like... She's so powerful. This is obviously she's... leading towards being like, women can do it too. Or is this the famous gay sex scene I've heard so much about? Where the three it's like, I'm glad we got rid of that. We got rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> they all turned to each other. Well, let's go, Kane. Edge. <laughs> so Rydia and Rosa take off. And we start heading to the moon. It's so weird. It's, it's really like, weird. It's like they really wanted to make the first time they made Rosa and Rydia stay behind like more meaningful or yeah. something. I don't know why they do this. Yeah, this is like a thread that's barely existent in the game, but is like clearly attempting something. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, the three of us are doing this? I like, no, fuck this. Dude, fuck this come plan. on. You be a good girl and go off, and they're like, thanks a lot, and that's, and then we're like, hooray? Fuck that. Fuck that. No, let's go back and get them right Ready. now. They're gonna just. Yeah. All right. they, they, okay. So we land on the moon, and as we go to leave the big whale, up pops Rosa and Rydia. They were stowing away. Luckily, they just stowed away, and they just rejoined the party. Yeah. Like, like we we were, like, serious about leaving them behind for chivalry or whatever nonsense. But then when they're there, we're like, nah, I guess as long as you're here. As long as you're here. Come with us. Of course. Rosa. We're like, we didn't leave. You're idiots. Get out of my way. No, I won't unless you take us. I don't care how dangerous it'll be. I don't care as long as I can be with you. Oh boy. We thought we were gonna pass the Bechdel test, guys. 
And it turned out we're taking a nosedive. At least as far as Rosa goes, it's not like she stayed out of a sense of like, I'm in this too, and this is my story. She stayed because she's like, Cecil, I just want nothing more than to be with you. I I love you, Cecil. I don't care about the fucking world. Damn it. She's so terrible. Rydia comes because she's a badass and right. a hero. Rosa is like my boyfriend. <laughs> it's why. <laughs> Where's Yang's wife in all this? You know, <laughs> Yang's wife is back home with Yang. Yang was like, <laughs> yeah. this was Yang was like, well, I fought that robot. I'm just, uh, I'm not going with you. Yeah, like, he, it's not even an option. Take her, Cecil. Take her in front of all of us. Oh God. Okay, Rosa. <clears throat> Whatever happens, what happens I'll, I'll protect, protect you. you. No, that's not the kissing. point. I think they are kissing too. We did it. The point was saying we did it. I don't. <laughs> did they just do it? Is that what they mean? No, we did it. What did we do, Rydia? Not you too. No way, both Didn't of you. Didn't I say we're all fighting for a common cause? Besides, I'm yeah, seriously. I'm the only caller you believe no one thought like, of Nobody this. Ma- like, even said that. <laughs> she's like, guys, we went to the moon and fought Bahamut. And Come now on. I'm the only one who can call him. And you're saying no? There's. Didn't I say we're all fighting for a common cause? This is a problem I think all RPGs, even modern ones, have. Is, like, no one in the game, like, recognizes the shit you've done. Right. Like, even the... Ma- like, they're like, <clears throat> like, we fought Moon Dragon. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> we've been through shit. We're at the end of the movie. I wish they did that in games. Like, recount everything. Man, I can't believe how far we've come. It's, we- it's been a crazy trip, guys. <laughs> you learned Lightning 1, and then Lightning 2, and then Lightning 3. <laughs> and this guy over here... Here. He His learned slash, blitz. Yeah, he got the blitz. <laughs> the slashes got stronger. We went to the store and traded our old mm. weapons in for new ones. And then we went to another store in another town and we did the same thing there again. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to another cave and fought another monster. And, then they're, and they're like, it's crazy. We like. Wait. I think that happens in 15, because we all, like, sit down for a meal around the campfire, oh, right. and but, we're like, you know what, But they say that, Shit's but crazy. then it's like, but what but happened what in that happen? game? Remember, we went to that gas station, yeah. and our car <laughs> broke down? <laughs> what a weird way to handle this here. message. Here, do you want to take over? I'm sure. In the bathroom. But where am I going? Shit. He's in the bathroom, I don't know what to do. I thought we were gonna, like, have a final confrontation on a ship and he would be, like, the final boss as he's like, I don't want to hurt you and we right. kill him or something. Right. I didn't think he was just gonna be like, whoa, sorry, mind controlled again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> well, I didn't think that was gonna be what happened. I knew he'd come back again, but I didn't think it would be just like a, well, don't worry, I'm not mind controlled anymore again. <laughs> like... Should I go back to Earth and find out about this, uh, these dancers or something? The thing is, I don't know. I mean... Where, what am I doing here on the moon now? We're gonna go, go, we're gonna go fight the bad guy. Where? Around the lunar path, back to, like, that place where all the crystals were, where we picked up old man magic. And I can't fly there? No. No, you can't. (laughs) We're like, I'm done fighting. For now... So we go through the lunar path, which is a pathway full of monsters, you'd be shocked to hear, Mm -hmm. and try to make our way back to where we met Fusoya, which is this big crystal building. Yeah, and then once we're in there, there's like a new pathway that goes down into the basement. Yeah, we show back up in that room with those eight crystals who talk, and the crystals are saying the the way is now open. Mm -hmm. You can go in to the center of the moon. Yeah. Where Zemus lives. The Tower of Babel was destroyed and Zemus' field has been lifted. The path is open. Yeah. How long? You will find weapons that once endangered the lives of the Lunarians sealed within the Zemus below here. Go toward the core. All these crystals are like, why are you talking to us? Between our conflicting powers exists an enormous amount of energy. Well, the enormous amount of energy is dwindling within me. Because it is, what time is it now? We're getting like close to four? It's four o'clock. It's four o'clock. All of our powers are used to neutralize the powers of Zemus from the core. 
Fusoya and Kluya's son went inside. Yeah, the crystals are like, Golbez and Fusoya came through here. They went down into the core of the moon, and that was a while ago. They haven't come back out. Mm -hmm. Not sure what happened to them. Well, I mean, they could be wandering around in an endless maze. You never know. It could be happening. We shall guide you to the path that leads to the core. Whoop. We appear underground in a dungeon. This is it, the final dungeon. Uh-huh. It really I'm is serious. The, it this really is, is the, the final, final dungeon, one. but it's also like we don't know what really lies ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Demist versus debone. This guy's about to get deboned, you know what I mean? We're gonna debone the debone. You've seen that Sorkinisms video? Mm -hmm. For those of you who have not seen the Sorkinisms video on YouTube, Aaron Sorkin is the guy who wrote The West Wing and Sports Night and Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip and a bunch of movies like The American mm -hmm, President mm -hmm. and stuff. And he has a recurring thing where like, he, he'll he just reuse entire chunks of dialogue, like whole backs and forth, just lifted from his own work. He steals <laughs> his own material. And the Sorkinisms video is a mashup of all the times that this is done in different Aaron Sorkin shows. We should probably do this on our own show eventually. We should I mean, definitely. we probably will have to, right? Yeah, I mean, things come up and come up I'm again. I'm pretty sure the games do that, too. Yeah, They're going to they, be lifting things from themselves. They do steal from themselves. <laughs> Anyways, Sorkin loves some wordplay. One of his favorites is uh, talking about how the English language sucks. And he's like, he uses, he always cites the uh, fact that boned and deboned mean the same thing. I wish you could hear me roll my eyes. <laughs> oh, I can, I, I, feel like, I feel like the audience can hear it. Because, I mean, you're doing it so hard, I, it's like... It must be coming through the microphone. I can see it through my... Like, if I closed my eyes, I could see how hard you're rolling your eyes. Yeah, he'll write the line, like, uh... Disheveled is a word, but sheveled? Nowhere to be found in the dictionary. God, you know what? I never thought about it, but you're right. The English language is just stupid. <laughs> Fascinating stuff, really. I really wish, uh... Yeah, like, I, I, I want to see if I can get your eyes... And you know what? I bet that there's no reason that disheveled is a word either. I bet there's, like, no history behind why that's a word and disheveled isn't. I bet, that, I, bet, I bet if you looked into it, all you would find is people going, like, you're right, some idiot just thought of it. <laughs> and he didn't think of a counterpart word. Who designed this language? Who designed this language? Millions of random people speaking it over the years? <laughs> what the fuck? Who's the author? But who loves the English language more than him? I don't know. Big Bird. Big Bird likes the English language. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> like, you know who really likes the English? Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that's really how he felt about it, he could go speak Esperanto. I'm sure it's very, like, simply and elegantly designed. What is Esperanto? It's this, like, language that was invented in, like, the 40s or 50s. We now know it was invented much earlier than that, but don't worry, we're getting there. Yeah, well, don't, if you're worried about whether or not we're going to talk more about Esperanto, worry not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a... It's just meant to be an international language. Oh, it has oh, no, like, I've, yeah, I've heard about this. It has yeah. no, like... Yeah. I've watched some videos on it. I'm not convinced it's a language that you could speak past the equivalence of, like, first or second year Spanish. You know, like, it's designed to be totally... Like, like, it's where? a basic it's a library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gracias a mí, pero le convi. me. This is, is a this video. To English? Like, is there English in this involved to tell you about? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, so wait. You can see there's like a badger. So that's fox. which? <laughs> yeah. A sexy badger. A sexy badger. <laughs> like a Chippendales badger. I like zombies. That means you will be. Will you be scared? 
It's uh, it seems like a, <laughs> it seems like <laughs> Spanish gibberish. There was some movie I want to say William Shatner was in this terrible movie that's all in Esperanto. <laughs> For real? Yeah. We have to find that. We have to see that. Shatner was in a movie entirely in that language. Yeah, we need to know. There were, it was a totally nerdy sci-fi thing where because Esperanto is this like utopian. Yeah, ideal, it's totally the you know, Star Trek that's idea. Like, it's like in the future we just made a new. It's like there will be a universal language, but we still have to like learn it. Like it's Spanish. Like yeah, I yeah, want to know. Ha- <laughs> you have to learn it. What you thought the alternative to learning a new language was? You're like I, it's invented language, but you still gotta learn like, the I, language. What was I thinking? <laughs> I don't know. Like I literally every time we hear <laughs> I this, I idea. go like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, you have to you're learn so it. You're so tired that like in your head, you're like, "What's the point of another language if you gotta learn it?" Yeah. I don't understand <laughs> why anyone would do this. Like, who would go through that? <laughs> Just get me to the cutscene. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just get, get me to the, the cutscene. Cut <laughs> Incubus is a 1966 black and white American horror film filmed entirely in the constructed oh, I really Toronto. <laughs> Wait, what year did it come out in? 1966. It was directed by the creator of The Outer Limits, Leslie Stevens. Oh, so it was like young Shatner. And it stars William Shatner shortly before he would begin his work on Star Trek. Oh! It's not post-Boston legal Shatner. <laughs> he's, he's not speaking Esperanto. Doesn't give a fuck. Jeez, oh, dude. Yeah. The use of Esperanto was intended to create an eerie otherworldly feeling. But the whole movie is shot in that and language? And Stevens prohibited dubbing the film into other languages. <laughs> what? <laughs> However, the special features section of the DVD, the makers claim that Esperanto was used because of perceived greater international sales. Perceived? <laughs> they were like, everyone will be speaking it by the time this movie comes That's out. That's <laughs> hilarious. That's fucking an amazing thing to think. Monsters. Oh, it was created. It was created in the late eighteen seventies. By who, though? L. L. Zamenhof, a Polish Jewish ophthalmologist from Bialystok. How is that not the start to like a very specific joke? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a Polish Jewish like I feel like that should end with like walks into a bar. But how did he create it? At, like like and like what did he? Uh, he created the language to reduce the time and labor we spend in learning foreign language tongues. But, like, who, from and what and wh- how did he do that? I'm getting there. Harmony between people from different countries. In his words, were there but an international language, all translations would be made into it alone, and all nations would be united in a common brotherhood. And then we wouldn't have to have this terrible English translation of Final Fantasy. Oh my god! We could just have the Esperanto version and, from the start. And all of it would make sense. Yeah, it would all be the, <laughs> it would all make it would perfect all make sense. sense. The place where I was born and spent my childhood gave direction to all my future struggles. <sighs> I mean, that's a pretty amazing sentence. Yeah, but it really sounds better in its original Esperanto, you know? <laughs> yeah, it loses totally. something. <laughs> in the translation. In the retranslation. <laughs> in Bielstock, the inhabitants were divided into four distinct elements, Russians, Poles, Germans, and Jews. Each of these spoke their own language and looked on all the others as enemies, or at least the most influential basis for the separation of the human family into groups of enemies. Enemies. I was brought up as an idealist. I was Wait, taught that all family people... into enemies? What does that mean? Groups, different families become enemies because they don't speak the same language. He's saying that, like, your family speaks Russian, my family speaks you know, Polish. And so we're enemies. Because we don't speak, we can't even talk to each other, but we live next door. That's not... Not wrong. Yeah, no. It all comes from a good place. It's a, a Polish Jewish ophthalmologist from Bialystok <laughs> walks into a German bar. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And uh, and he sits down at the bar and he looks really depressed. And uh, the bartender walks up to him before he even pours the drink. He just starts saying, "You know, it's just so sad. We live in this world that's divided, not just by culture, but also by language." Uh-huh. My boy, he's about yay high. <laughs> 
and he goes out each day, and the neighbors have a boy of about yay high too. And in my mind, I remember when I was a boy about yay high, and I had a playmate, and we would run up and down the streets and cause all kinds of mayhem. But they just watch each other from across the street. They don't even say hello. Uh And the bartender tries to interrupt him, and he says, and then at work, (laughs) we don't get enough contracts, uh, ophthalmology contracts. (laughs) Because half the town speaks a different speaks Russian. Uh-huh, and they don't uh-huh. even know how to speak to us Poles. Uh-huh. And he's like, and don't even get me started on on how it's all divided up culturally with like the Jews and the Russians and the Poles all together. He's like, if only we could all speak one language, we could come together <laughs> and and stop being so divided. I feel like we're on the brink of some horrible war, some horrible global conflict <laughs> that could just be avoided. But I fear there will be much bloodshed in, in our future. And the bartender just kind of looks at him and says, Was? Which means what in German. Right. Yeah. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand. Because the guy is speaking in another language, Mm -hmm. and Esperanto hasn't been invented yet. Yes. Yes. (laughs) That's it. That's the one. That's what I was looking for. Like you said, it's the start to an extremely specific joke. Yeah. (laughs) But, like... What I don't understand is, like, how does it, like, why is it this specific way? That Why is the language like this? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there's a reason. I mean, because this guy decided it should be this way. You're right. You're right. The same <laughs> Just like, like every like... language. One guy. <laughs> One guy chose it. <laughs> decided it should be like that. No, but it does remind me of, like, I think in the first season we say something to the effect of, like, when we're talking about checking rooms, and it's like, you don't have to check rooms. It's just a thing a guy decided it would be. You don't have to speak Esperanto. <laughs> <laughs> like, is Esperanto it easy to understand no, no, no. and learn? I think it is. Like, easier than any other language ever? Because that's the bar it has to clear. Right, for you, unless it's it's definitely the easiest language of all time. Yeah, it's got to be as easy as possible. Otherwise, why does it exist? Because we all got to... There's like a transition that has to happen from all languages that currently exist on Earth to this. Well, no, he's not saying you get rid of every language. Everyone just I'm... sort of knows some of this so that you can have interaction, you know? Oh, okay. That's his idea, is that oh, it's like... It's, it's not like supposed to knows replace a languages. It's supposed to, like, bridge oh, other languages. That's... That's what it's for. Is he's like He's like, you go to another country and you could, like, order your food in Esperanto and they would right. know what you're talking about. But it's, like, basic shit. It doesn't have to be that complicated of a language because it's not like it's for books to be written in it. I mean, it's he for, did like, compl- translate books into Esperanto. Well, that's, I guess, to help people learn the basics of speaking it. But it's like, so everybody has to be bilingual in this world. Yeah, and then also, mm-hmm. let's say you wrote a book in English and mm-hmm. you wanted to release it internationally. You would just do one translation into Esperanto <laughs> and God. release it because everybody else speaks Esperanto. I don't know. I don't know. Why? I, hold on. Don't be so critical of Esperanto hey, yet, Jeff. I'm just asking the questions. <laughs> I'm not being critical. I'm just... I got a lot of questions. I, I'll be patient with the answers, but I'm uh, going to... After I'm going to throw all the questions at you at once. Which Zamenhof spent translating literature into Esperanto. Oh my God. <laughs> As well as writing original prose and verse. His family and friends must have thought he had lost his fucking mind. Definitely. Like, he's spending all of his free time translating books into a language he that made he up. That he made up. <laughs> yeah. You know, in seventh grade, my close friend and I actually did make up a whole language ourselves. Yeah. We called it Ekmonian. <laughs> <laughs> stupidest thing in the goddamn universe and like we actually had all these cards i wonder if i can find them can where you speak some ekmonian well because the thing the main thing was was it was like we would just come up with other made-up words for things and it was like a vocabulary list it wasn't like a language it wasn't like where there was like a grammar. structure okay. yeah no it, it was, was like just like a... words were other words we're, we're, what if it were english but we just had different but names we just things. called it something else yeah. ekmonian it's, it was really bad. There's like... Dude, what's over there? A sword. How do we get over there? I don't know. This is a crazy dungeon, dude. Monsters. So we wrote a bunch of books. Uh, Same point of it. You'll be shocked to hear that the Nazis were very suspicious of Esperanto. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. That's a great sentence. Jews had to continue to pray in secret. 
Like, yeah. I don't think that there were anybody who I don't was think like, anyone cared enough. we got to keep speaking <laughs> Esperanto. It's part of our culture. Keep it alive. Even you might get killed for speaking uh, yeah, it, but we're still going to Nobody's going to die for it. Esperanto. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Also, I'm like really focused on the game right now because it's fucking hard. Yeah, this dungeon is full of monsters in boxes. <laughs> monsters everywhere, really. And those box monsters you can't run from and the fights are really tough. But then you get a sweet item, so you got to mm-hmm. do it. You have to. I'm sure you'll be able to hear it on the recording, but you're like saying stuff that I'm I am legitimately interested yeah, in, but I'm also like time. Jesus well, fucking Christ. Now. I'm I'm needing to focus right now. Unlike the episode where I was talking at you and you were just like having a terrible internal experience. This is me similar. just like being like I'm I need like, to I need to focus. Something bad is yeah, happening. Yeah, we'll talk later. This whole dungeon, like the setup of it is crazy. Fascist Italy allowed the use of Esperanto, finding its <laughs> phonology similar to that of Italian, and publishing some e- tourist material in the language. Crystal Linguistic crystal. properties, this is what you want to know about. This is dense and boring, I'm not going to read this. Yeah, don't. <laughs> oh my god. What? It's tired. It's late. It's definitely late. We're so close. We're so close. You're not. You're not close. In the game, the number of steps to like the final room is not that far. If there were no monsters between I us know, and it, I know. But like the the feats that are in the way of us <laughs> in the end are just impossible. Mm-hmm. I come out of there. I think I came down the ladder. This place is enormous, man. Makes this sense. place is like so big. Shit, dude. Dude, if I might lose this fight, I might straight up lose this fight. This is a thing that could happen right now. It could totally happen. Oh, delicious. I'm in real trouble right now. Like, we never got a chance to go to a shop. We never, like, went back to Earth, went to a shop and got ethers, which is something that, like... No. We can afford We do have that save that's right outside of the moon base. (sighs) We don't... don't. Dude! This has to be it. This has to be it. This has to be it. (sighs) I had one dude left alive And if he was hit one more time He was gonna die Oh oh my god Kane gained a level Two (laughs) He gained two levels Give an elixir to Rosa And then be sure to be blinking Cecil in, in, in these fights Yeah yeah Good thinking Thank you for the good advice This is why you need two people playing this game can't be playing Final Fantasy alone. <laughs> Dropping so much money. But like, I get, no, I don't. I don't think you should. Like, fight when I with, fight a monster, like, man, fuck you guys. Like, I'm just assuming I'm going the right way. I think you are. It feels like I am. So we enter a hallway that has three doors in it, and instead of checking those three doors, I continue past them because I'm pretty sure up ahead may just be like just a chest, and so I'm gonna grab the chest and then I'm gonna go check the rooms. I mean, you're gonna have to go in these. There could be a save right there. What are you doing? I, I didn't know that this was continuing. God, and seeing this again, like, I want to, like, reach back and stop you. Like, no, <laughs> no. Because you walk past three doors, and because in your head again, you're like, I know the layout of this dungeon. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is how I'm going to do it. And in my mind, I'm like, I was so sure that in that first door, there was a save room. Right. And you walk back and walk in the last door. I do walk back in <laughs> to the last door, not the first one. I want to point I'm out. In, I'm fighting with you in my mind because I'm like, I know the layout of the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I know the layout of the yeah. dungeon. That's a funny element where it's like uh, we've been talking about like, yeah, we want to go back and shake ourselves and tell our previous selves like what this was like. But the truth is, all we can do now is learn from them going yeah, forward. But it's- we can't get a message through to our past selves. We're getting through again. We've been broadcasting for weeks, though, and nothing's changed. You're right. Whatever we're doing here, it's not working. What was it that I just said? Uh, In the past, past me, what would you past me just say? A bunch of bullshit about accepting your past. I can't, I mean, oh, I no, no, that's not what I want to hear. Oh, that's what the answer has always been. 
Batman in the past, and that was the point of all this time travel shit, was that wasn't gonna be the answer this time, because it fucking sucks! This is exactly what we were trying to avoid. I'm 75, that can't be the answer. But what if we did learn from our past, instead of trying to change it? <sighs> I'm really worried that that's the only way that you can actually become a better person. Fucking shit, all the self-help books are always just so right. I hate how right the self-help world is. It's fucking bullshit. I need to deal with this. There's got to be some way out of the human condition. Fucking God damn it, it's right. Well, then why do we keep broadcasting to change our past if we gotta just learn from it? I don't want to accept the choices I've made. I've made bad choices. You're telling me I just have to accept them and then move on and change based on that? No, no, no. I, th I think we should give this up. I think we give the whole get in touch with the past up. I know, we get rid of it. Leave it in our past. It's yet another time. choice we shouldn't have made. I know, we gotta get rid of all this time travel gear. We're going to prison for a long time. It's gonna be bad. We shouldn't do these things. Accepting your past is totally legal. Okay, I think I might throw up, but I think I'm gonna... I'm swallowing my acceptance. <sighs> we can only hear ourselves, learn from it, and move <laughs> forward. Oh, I was like, I was like, you're just gonna walk past them? No. Looking at these three doors, my instincts for what this is is like walking the first door and your right. instincts are like go to go past it and yeah. it's totally like the idea of final fantasy instincts are so <laughs> it's so weird that like by this point in the game you just kind of are like feeling out yeah like some extra sensory <laughs> what's behind the door <laughs> anyway the room i do walk into has a really really big fight the sacred ribbon shall not be within your hands Ribbon time. D looter too. You should use an elixir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time. Uh, oh my god, dude, this is bad. Dude, this is really bad. This is really, 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 really bad. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's really fucking bad. <laughs> Yeah, this is not just a fight. This is like an optional boss fight. This like is a hard <laughs> puzzle boss. Yeah, and we do not know the puzzle. No. We don't even have time to think about it. <laughs> it's we cast and reflect. Yeah, this is a <laughs> seriously tough fight. She didn't even get to call Bahama. What the f fuck is this shit? I what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? I just blew my turn. What the fuck? 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 Oh no. Oh. Dude, I have to pee. Oh. Go. Go. Go to the bathroom. Just go home. Go to bed. Mm -hmm. Go to go to sleep. We're too. We bought in too hard at this point. Yeah, we're. we're yeah. It's like four or five already. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta go back to Earth. We gotta get stuff. We gotta get the heels and the night. We gotta get ninety nine ethers. Fucking Jesus Christ, dude. Uh. And that's episode 11. Yeah, that was a <laughs> brutal moment. And, like, those three doors you walked past, that becomes, like, our goal for the next, like, two or three hours. Yeah. We're just trying to get back to we this We can't point. even get back to that point. Th there's so many th bad choices that we're making at this point. The le Not the least of which is, like, it's 5 a.m. And you're going to say something next episode to the effect of, I've, al I've already ruined myself for a week. I might as well go all the way and beat it. I, yeah, that's really how I felt at the time. That sunk cost. Yeah, and it's I mean... It's a fallacy. Yeah, look, I mean, this is just like last season. It's like, at this point, like, watching this video, like, makes me tired. <laughs> like, I'm exhausted right now. Yeah. It's not even that late in the day no. when we're recording this, no. and I just, like, feel drained. <laughs> it's hard to watch <laughs> like, two people who are this tired doing this to themselves. Anyway, join us next week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Rate and review us on iTunes. You can find us at no one can know about this dot com, no cap podcast at gmail dot com, and at no cap podcast on Twitter. And if you want to get the episodes earlier on in the week, consider heading on over to patreon.com slash no cat 
you can support us that way too. Before we go, here's another taste of next week on No One Can Know About This. Hello, hello. <laughs> no, we're done with this. I thought we were done. I'm not gonna die at an old folks' home doing mazes. Yes, you are. No. Accept your present. 